Welcome to the academic kickoff. No longer the VPA day, but uh, I'm good with name changes. I hope you've had a gorgeous summer and a fun summer and enjoyable summer and successful summer and it's, uh, it's nice to start another academic year. I'd like to welcome our community partners who have joined us this morning and thank you for your ongoing support at Durham College. Can I get the community partners just to raise your hand or stand and say good morning? Maybe just stand if you're from the community, from our PACs and our community partners. Who else is here? Great. Well, thank you very much for joining us this morning. It's great to have you here. So thanks to Elaine for providing me a few minutes to touch on a couple of items and I'm told I've got 10 to 15 minutes and then the hook comes out and I'm gone. So I'm going to try my best to get through my 25 pages of notes here. So uh, uh, I think we also have some new faculty and staff in the audience. New faculty, new staff, please stand, okay, and be recognized. Who's new to Durham College? Come on, stand up. <laughs> Fabulous. Well, welcome to Durham, the Durham College family. You know, one of the most amazing places to work to fulfill your career aspirations, but also make the difference in other people's lives. Welcome to Durham College. You know, next week we welcome close to 11,000 students to our campus. Students who are excited, nervous, and just bursting with enthusiasm. And as our, we'll hear from our guests a little bit later, speaker, does he mention also that we have sprinters, wanderers, and strugglers? You know, our job is to welcome all of them with the same enthusiasm and commitment to our mission. The student experience comes first. You know, year after year, we see how a college education can change lives through learning. Again, our job is to help our students succeed, find the right path and program, and excite their curiosity and their capacity. Give them the skills needed to hit the ground running. You know, as I, as I visit many of you on the campus, and I talk to you, a lot of you this morning, and talk to people throughout the year, I'm always impressed with your commitment, with your pride, and your expressed enjoyment of the work that you do. My job is to ensure that you have the tools, support, and positive environment for you to do your work well. You know, we all have a role. We all depend on each other to make this place work and to be successful. And our students also expect that from us. And our students measure our, our, our success through our KPIs. Where's the clicker? Oh, here it goes. So I want every year our students give us a report card. I'd like to start by sharing some of the information that I shared at the town hall in May, because I know not everybody was there. KPIs will be gathered in the winter semester. It's going to be our 50th year in 2017. But today is a day we must start to think about what our students are telling us. The new, a new KPI task force has been formed. It's being led by Debbie McKee Demchuk and Carol Beam. I'm hoping that we learn from that task group, learn things that will help us continue to improve, continue to improve our KPIs and the evaluation from our students. You know, while there are a number of successes in our KPIs, we've also seen some decreases in some program quality areas. We've seen that our annual KPI improvement plans, they do work. And I congratulate to those of you who saw increases in your KPIs. I'm going to share with you two graphs. The first one is really a look at the college system, which is on my right, and Durham College on my left. You can see that it looks at graduation rates, student satisfaction, graduate satisfaction, employer satisfaction, and graduate employment rates. You can see from the system average that uh, the, the furthest column, 83.6, is last year's numbers, and where we compare at 83.2. You can see on average, Durham College is in the middle of the pack which is a great place to be, but we can always do better. But you can also see that we're below the average. So there's some work to do for us as a college to try to increase the evaluation that the students give to us. And again, KPIs is not just an academic question. KPIs reach every operation, everything that we do as a college. So it's everybody's responsibility to really pay attention to what our students are telling us. The most interesting slide that I showed in the town hall and one of probably the most striking things about our KPIs is the gap between our highs and our lows. I would encourage those of you that find yourselves at the bottom of the list to take a close look at what changes can occur to increase your KPIs, our KPIs. And I truly believe if we work together to help those at the bottom of the scale improve, that we would have the absolute highest KPIs in the entire system. You can see from this slide 
There's no names on these programs, but the top 15 program KPIs are at the top of this slide. You can see they go as high as 96.9%, but also the bottom 15 programs are on there also, to a low of 45.6. You're educators. If your students were at that level, you would help them succeed. You would give them work to help them bring their grades up. You would support them and mentor them. And as an institution, we need to do the same thing to help those programs rise to the, at least the average. And by doing that, we will be one of the highest colleges in the system. So I wanted to, this is the time of year we really have to take a look at our, at our KPIs and start thinking about it. Because in February, our students will once again evaluate us. You know, this uh, academic year is a very, very special one for us. We are on the eve of our 50th anniversary celebration and also the college system. It's time to get involved. It's time to get interested. It's time to get connected to our up and coming celebration. There are three items that I want to touch on related to our 50th anniversary. And the first is this gorgeous building. The replacement of our Simcoe building. A building has been there since 1969, and this gentleman over here, I believe, was in that building in 1969 or 1970, taking courses at Durham College. And so it's been a, a great building for us, it's been a great legacy building for us, but it's time to build a new legacy. So part of our 50th anniversary are the approved plans for the replacement of the Simcoe building. You know, last year I stood here and I said, I'm gonna replace the Simcoe building before I retire, and I don't wanna work until I'm 85. Well, folks, I don't have to wait until I'm 85, which I'm really happy about. So with $35 million in funding from government, we will replace the Simcoe building with a four-story center for collaborative learning. The new building is going to house the school college work initiative and the center for success. The Aboriginal and Diversity Student Centers, the Entrepreneurship and Innovation Center in partnership with the Spark Center. Our new global open and collaborative space new programs for the School of Health and Community Services, new capacity and labs for our preparatory and foundation programs, and much needed open study and event space for our students. Site preparation will begin in October, and the building is expected to be completed early 2018. Not quite 2017, but that's okay. It'll be well up by our celebration in September on 2017 which at that time, we will tear down the Simcoe building and create some beautiful green space on campus for all of you and for our students. So this is an image of, uh, if you were driving south on Simcoe Street, this is the image where you, this is built in front of the Simcoe building, and this building will connect to our SSB building. Uh, it's really interesting because, of course, you know there's a hill there. So one story will be below the hill, but there are three stories above the ground. There'll be entry at the bottom level, but also entrance off of the Simcoe Street. This is an elevation driving north on Simcoe, and this is what you'd see north, and to the left, uh, you can see the student services building, the white building there, and how it connect to that. This is a view from the inside. If you're looking from UIT to the new building, this would be the view. This shows you how it'll connect to the SSB building, and so those two buildings will come together. And it's a very open concept from the second floor to the first floor. It'd be an open atrium, event space, a lot of space for our students to study, to gather, to celebrate, and, and also to, for teaching and learning space. And then this is a view from the second level, sort of looking down into the, the lower level of the building. I'm very, very excited about this building. We're very fortunate as a college to receive the funding that we have from government that we can actually celebrate this as a legacy building for the next 50 years for, for Durham College. Again, incredible legacy for that building. It has served us so well, but it's now time to move on. It's now time to look to the next 50 years and build a building that's going to serve you as educators, us as a college, and our students as learners. So I'm very excited about that. Again, in October, you'll start to see you'll start to see that building go up. So to support the construction of the building, Durham College will soon launch a capital campaign to raise $5 million of the funding needed to complete the project, to build something truly amazing, to support the provincial campaign, the start of something amazing. As the campaign is launched, please consider making a contribution. You know, with 2017, our 50th anniversary, Marketing and Communications have launched a great website for our 50th. I, if you haven't checked it out, please do so. I'll share a couple slides with you, only to highlight what's on this web page. The first one is a celebration for everyone. Who in here is a Durham College graduate, alumni? 
It's incredible. It's not only about alumni, it's about our current student, students, you stu your students, you as faculty and staff, it's about community. And so this really is about a celebration that's going to last an entire year. And as I said earlier, it's time for you to get involved. Um, the next slide looks at a survey. Please take a minute and complete the survey online so that we can get your input into our 50th anniversary, that we throw the celebration that you're going to be proud of and also that you'll take part in. And we also have a number of, there's a survey, we also have a number of videos that are now starting to appear on the website and they'll continue to populate videos from some of our very successful alumni. And I want to play this video for, for you from Sheila Cordoval. Uh, she, lives in, she lives in Mississauga, but she's had incredible success. But this is what she says about her experience at Durham College. Roll it, please. There you go. Sheila Corvo, the two-year public relations diploma program in 1988. I have so many fond memories of Durham College, but probably the one that stands out the most would be my uh, volunteer experience with the Big Brothers of Oshawa and Whitby. I worked closely with a team of volunteers and we organized the Bowl for Millions to raise money and also to encourage more matches of Big and Little Brothers. Upon graduation from Durham, my first job was at a small PR agency, in large part to do with Ev McCrimmon, who was my PR professor. I'm very thankful for the fact that he introduced me to his colleague and was a, a big reason why I got the job. And more recently, I have my dream job now at KPMG International, where I work with 172,000 extraordinary people, and we work with 155 countries. I'm so pleased to hear that Durham College is going to be involved with the Enactus World Cup in the near future. KPMG is the premier sponsor of this annual event. Students from around the world gather to give 17-minute presentations on how they've made the world a better place. On behalf of KPMG, I've been to China and South Africa, and this year it's in Toronto, next year it's in the UK, and I can't encourage enough students to get involved with Enactus to make a difference. I can't believe that we're celebrating a 50th anniversary for colleges. I would encourage all other graduates to get involved, whether it's in special events or programs, or simply join the conversation with social media. I, for one, hope to reconnect with many of my former classmates and see the faculty that's still here, and hopefully some are returning for the events. Sheila and a number of other alumni have started to populate the site with videos and go on and enjoy it. There's some really impressive people and some fun videos on there. The last thing I want to touch on is just Run for DC. Scotiabank uh, annual run and uh, on October 16th, Durham College employees, alumni, volunteers and students and friends will uh, show their pride and support for Durham College by participating in the Scotiabank Toronto Waterfront Marathon, Half Marathon or 5K. So, I don't know if I look like a couch potato or not, but I've had so many people come up to me and challenge me to run the 5K. So I'm out training all summer in this heat, and I, damn it, I'm going to make it. I'm going to beat those people who challenge me, too. Where's Danielle Harder? She was the first one. So Danielle, you and I are one and one, but there's a lot of other people, too, who have challenged me. So it's an exciting event. Uh, money raised for the event will fund a new Center for Collaborative Education. Our goal is to raise $20,000 as a running team. Uh, Durham College Alumni Association will match dollar for dollar any DC alumni donation up to the $20,000. And to date we have 21 people participating and so far we've raised about $3,700. So you can run, you can walk, you can sponsor a participant and help us build our amazing building. More information you can find out through the Office of Alumni and uh, De Development Alumni Affairs. So please take a minute, go on our website, it's all there and get involved. So just before I hand the podium back to Elaine, I want to wish you a successful and rewarding academic year. I really hope that your year is filled with experiences that inspire, excite, and make you continue to strive to do your absolute best. You know, the student experience is our mission. Education is our mandate. Excellence is our goal. And collaboration makes it all work. Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your day.